Welcome to the A Minute to Midnight show. Folks, this is Tony coming to you from New Zealand and I have, for the first time in quite a while, but certainly we've had on the show a number of times before, Carla Butard from Texas, USA. And uh, it's really nice to chat to you, Carla. I always have a real nice, peaceful feeling when I'm talking to you uh, on th- on these shows, so it's great to be doing it again. Well, thank you, and thank you for having me back. It has been a very long time. I've had a whirlwind of a year. <laughs> so I was surprised to find out. I was looking the other day to see when the last time I was on, and I think it's been like a year ago or yeah well i can't even remember could be i'm not sure exactly when either it's been a few Mm -hmm. times we've had you on but it has been a good break so yeah well perhaps you could tell the listeners of just a brief background if they haven't heard you before um about yourself okay well i'm just a an ordinary woman with an extraordinary life (laughs) um i'm a housewife i'm a grandmother um I'm a Bible student. I'm a Bible teacher. Um, I love sharing the Word of God, and I love I love to encourage people and um, you know exhort them and encourage them. And my passion is is teaching. You know, actually sharing the things that God has uh, changed my life with, and sharing those things with other people. Uh, hoping that, you know, they'll have the same experience. It hit me the other day um, as I was talking to a woman and she was saying, I I had told her one time because God is bringing her into deliverance and everything. And and, uh, I told her, I said, you know, someday you will be doing this. And she goes, you don't mean it. (laughs) And and it brought me to the scriptures of Jesus saying, verily, verily, I say unto you, the works that I do show you do also. And it's almost like a passing it along thing. You know, as your life changes, you'll be doing the same thing for other people, um, like passing it forward or paying it forward, whatever that show was that time. And that's how I feel like it it works. Yeah. Yeah, that's very good, actually. Um, I was thinking of someone else uh, that I just recently, uh, my really good friend Holly on the show, said something similar, like passing the baton, I think she used the, the terminology. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because in, in another scripture that hit me the other day um, is the the scripture that says, having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Um I I used to think that that meant, you know, like uh, churches, denominational church, dead churches, I should put, yeah. uh, that don't allow the workings of the Holy Ghost into their church. And that those are the churches that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. But r- recently, the Lord showed me as I am preparing for um, a meeting that will be a little bit different for me in Indiana coming up in March. And um, thinking about, you know, the, it's a dynamic church, um, but, I mean, they they allow the Holy Ghost, they move in the gifts of the Spirit, but there's no spiritual warfare and there's no deliverance. And I think, how can any church not be denying the power if they don't allow all the works that Jesus did in it? You know, I, that's a curious thing because I, back in the 80s and 90s, deliverance was quite a big thing in the churches and, and dealing with demonic things and all of that. And um, there, there were some ex- excesses of it and some stuff that wasn't done well, but right. there was a lot that was do- was done well and a lot of stuff happened. But it's almost like that's gone today, uh, it's very hard to find any churches that are dealing in that kind of thing. Well, that's right. And But although that's been my prayer, you know, ever since I have experienced such a change in my life, um, you know, where I was a Christian for 30 years, but could never seem to succeed. Well, at the time that I came into deliverance, um, which was in... Um, I don't even know where it began. It started with just reading the Bible, you know, and seeing Jesus doing it. And then when my daughter was five years old, that was 1988, 
that was really the first uh, I even knew about deliverance. And I didn't even know it was deliverance. You know, I uh, she was having a, a problem with um, she would cry and she didn't know why she was crying. And that was um, scary for a mother because, you know, we're supposed to be able to fix things for our children. But every day going to school, she would just these big tears would come down her cheeks. And I was almost, you know, having a fear that something had happened to her at school. And that's why she would cry every day going to school. Well, as I was seeking God for the answer to that, like, Lord, what what is this? What is causing this for her? And what can I do? And uh, one day on the radio, uh, a man was talking about how spirits can uh, transfer when a woman is pregnant, spirits can transfer t- to the baby. And uh, the other guy, it was two men talking, and the other guy said, well, you know, what if there is somebody listening that's having this going on? And so he said, well, you know, if you've, if, um, if you've had a child and you, let's just say he was using an example of a woman being depressed when she was pregnant, those spirit, which was exactly, it was my situation he was talking about. So, I mean, I knew God was answering my questions about this through this radio program with these two Christian men speaking. And he said, well, if you notice those same spirits on your child that were in you when you were pregnant and depressed, he said, it's a very simple thing. You just go to the the child's bedroom door while they're asleep. They don't have to be a participant in this because you're going to just speak to those spirits that transferred from you to the child and you're going to command them to go in the name of Jesus. And I was like, well, gosh, I mean, I was 30. Oh, gosh, I'm terrible in math. But I was in my early 30s when she was little. And so I thought, well, that doesn't sound very difficult. And so I went to her bedroom door that night and I began to speak to those spirits that I knew I had. I used to cry when I was depressed and I didn't really know why I was crying. And so that. I spoke to that, you know, the sorrow, the the weeping, the grief, the loneliness, all the things that I knew I was feeling in my depression. And I commanded those spirits to get out of her in the name of Jesus. And I want you to know that she did not cry going to school ever again. And that's, you know, the first few days I was surprised, but I didn't know that it was going to continue. And I thought to myself, my goodness. This is something very powerful. And that's really the very beginning of of my initiation, if you want to call it that, into deliverance. And then later, I had an uncle come, my uncle uh, Ernie Marzullo, who is Frank Marzullo Sr., was one of the grandfathers in deliverance. And um, his brother, is my uncle. Well, they're both dead now, but he came to visit us. And so we had many discussions about deliverance and everything. So that's really how I got into it. And he, when I told him this story about my little girl, he said, I'm going to send you some information. So he sent me a big box of stuff. And I just began to devour all these booklets that Frank Marzillo Sr. had written about different spirits And as I would read them, I would be getting deliverance. And I had a close friend that God had connected me with, and she had many issues. She was like suicidal when I met her. And so I began to share these things with her, and she began to get deliverance. And so it's really been a very interesting um, journey, I should say. But, you know, I just think it is so sad. Well, And I began to think about another thing that I've been questioning the Lord about is doctrines of devils. You know, I never, I I read read that and we've heard about it, but I didn't really have a handle on what a doctrine of a devil was. So I began to ask God, well, what is a doctrine of a devil? I don't want you to show me what this is so that I can have an understanding of it. So especially that I can recognize it when, if, when, and if it should ever present itself. Well, 
Of course, it has over the years. I just didn't really know to put that title on it. And um, so God began to show me. And I, I think I did one of the teachings um, called The Problem with Pr the Prosperity Message. Did I do that on your show? I think yes, I, I did. Yes, I think that we did quite some time back, yeah. Okay. And so from that, that was really kind of the beginning of of my understanding of a doctrine of a devil. And then since then, of course, many uh, have connected the dots that they are also doctrines of devils. And that is, and this is one of the things that I wanted to bring forth as a sort of um, just bringing an awareness for people to be watchful of. Because what I'm finding is, is that, like with the uh, prosperity message, you know, we all know that the prosperity gospel, as they call it, is not good. I mean, it's really been messing up some people's lives. And and yet, God wants us to be prosperous. You know, he said, Paul, um, yeah, Paul said, no, it was John. He said, I wish above all things that you might prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Okay, so uh, everything that God is about is about multiplication and increase. Um, and so what is happening is, and I'm finding it more and more as time goes on, is that Satan has found a way to take a promise or a principle of God and pervert it. And he perverts it to damage Christians, but also to keep Christians from even going, like to take possession of the promise or the principle that he intended for his people, but then the devil perverts it to keep us even from going near it. That's what I'm finding. That is a doctrine of a devil. Um, let me see. I had written some of these down. Okay. And see, because I would be like, I have done some teachings that have really bothered people. Um, I was talking with a good friend one day and it, it came up about dominion. Now there is a doctrine of dominion or a dominion gospel. There's a kingdom gospel. There's a, well, I'll just use the, the principle of dominion. You know, God gave it to us in Genesis one twenty six. He gave it to man. But yet, if you start talk, talking about dominion, they, the people who hear the word dominion, and this is another thing that I'm seeing going on a lot, and, and I'm going to develop a teaching on this. I've been talking about it for several years, but I need to just sit down and put it together. And that is uh, presumption and presuming and assuming. Um, I may mention dominion, and then they have heard of the doctrine of the devil's dominion. There's dominionism. Yeah. And this good friend of mine said, you have to really be careful when you even talk about that because uh, there is a um, a doctrine of dominionism. And I said, I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we've covered that on the show quite a bit. It's a complete distortion, but you're right. It's like God has um, Teach a teaching, a true teaching on dominion and how it works, but then the dominionists, the Christian dominionists, have distorted it and turned it into something that God never intended. And basically, exactly. it's way off, off the track. The seven mountains um, gospel, oh, yeah, yeah. all of that stuff, but it's a distortion. Like you say, I believe that's a doctrine of devils. And But what it is, is it started off with some truth that's become distorted. And I guess that's what the devil does, isn't it? Yes, and see that all. Um, I remember First Timothy uh, really ministered to me a whole lot at at a particular time in my life. But First Timothy four, you know, he tells us about this. Um, 
it says that the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of de- devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, and on and on it goes. But when it talks about um, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Now, here's the here's the thing. This is what God showed me in this. It's not, uh, people do not give heed to seducing spirits because they have fallen away from the faith. They fall away from the faith when they begin to give heed to the seducing spirits. And that's yeah. what these doctrines of devils are designed by Satan to do is to pull people away from the faith. You know, it's it's kind of like um, when I talk to people about life in general, you know, um, there's three sets of scriptures that I basically live my life by. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That is a true. It's truth in the word of God and the word of God is truth. And so if we will just trust in him and not lean under our understanding, that that was a very hard thing for me to learn to do, because, you know, we have tradition. We have um, the way we. Uh, we have logic and we have all these, the intellect, all these things that we count on to figure something out, some kind of a problem, any kind of problem that comes to us. Oh, well, we just, we always do this. Or we always, you think a thing and figure it out. No, don't lean into your own understanding. When I started doing that, boy, the Lord started opening things up to me and it was really exciting. So. Don't, you know, do things the way, the way you normally do it. For instance, when we were buying a house, our very first house that we bought had five contracts against it. Well, I didn't know anything about real estate. So when the, when the realtor said, don't get your hopes up, there's five contracts on this house. I didn't even know what that meant. So I did not let that enter into a uh, my understanding, my thought process, it, it couldn't um, dampen my faith in having that home because I had no knowledge of real estate. See, if I had knowledge of real estate, I would have done just what the realtor was saying. Oh, oh, five contracts on it. Okay, well, never mind. Let's look at something else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, do, That's yeah. what I see as leaning under your own understanding. You know, one of my favorite scriptures is um, Hosea 4.6. Uh, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's what I used to always say. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Uh, God said that. So what people need is knowledge. Knowledge of God's word. Okay. But then... Not long ago, he pointed out the second part of that. Because you have rejected knowledge, that was important. It's not so much that people haven't been given the knowledge. They reject the knowledge. And he goes on to say, and because of that, you shall be no priest to me, and I will forget your children. That's a scary scripture. Um, But... To, there is knowledge that can hurt you as well. We have knowledge. It, it's just like a girl I was talking to the other day, and she's going through a really hard trial in her life. And I was telling her uh, the scripture, Ephesians 3.20, but unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh within you, So he is able to do things. You know, you're thinking about the way things normally go. No, God can do way more than you could even ask or think. 
um, I love that scripture because I can think big. When I learned that, I, I took out all the stops. So, so when you, okay, the, the second set of scriptures that I like to live my life by is Matthew 6, 25 through 33. Be anxious for nothing. Well, let me just look those up and read them. Matthew 6. I love these scriptures because the last one is the most important one. And it's talking about, about your, really your relationship with the Lord. Therefore, I say unto you, be not anxious for your life. Now, that's a tough, a tough one to adhere to because people are anxious about every aspect of their lives. Uh, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than food and the body more than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubic unto his stature? Or why are ye anxious for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore be anxious, be not anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or with what shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first, this is it, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Added. Added unto you. That's been my experience. As That's why in the, um, I had sent you um, a letter that I sent out to people who have emailed me and donated. And the thing is, is to stay close to him. It's all, all in your connection with Jesus and his word. Stay in his word. Because these things that we're talking about, if you stay in his word, um, it occurred to me one day that one of the, the things that is written in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, or is it 12.4? I think it's 4.12. Uh, it's speaking of how the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And one of the things it says of the word at, at the end of that scripture is, is that it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of man's hearts. It's a discerner. And that's what I see so lacking in the church today is discernment. People need discernment. And, and there, it seems to me that people are just running from conference to conference, profit to profit, and not really uh, spending quality time in the Word of God so that you know the truth of the Word. Because those doctrines of devils, when they come along, if you're, if you're in the truth of the Word, you'll be able to, you'll have that discernment that you need to decipher, to discern when, wait a minute, this is not right. And I, I see so much of this um, going on with believers. And I don't, you know, it's like I had a pastor one time ask me because he was uh, beginning to give heed to some of these doctrines. You know, not too long ago, there was a lot, and I don't even know because I'm not, I'm not really, um, well, I haven't been going from conference to conference like I used to, and I would see all this stuff going on. And and it was bothersome to me because uh, I could tell in my gut, you know, that I, I would say I would get this feeling in my stomach a long time ago. It took me a while to understand that that was, that was where I would discern things. I would feel it in my spirit. There would be a check in my spirit, or I would call it a red flag, maybe. You know, mm -mm, I'm getting a red flag about this. 
but to give heed to these seducing spirits that are flooding into the church is what will cause people to fall away from the faith. And they go after these seducing spirits and these wrong doctrines like I'm talking about. And it's it's a real problem because it is an end time thing. And it's something that we're seeing a lot of. And people get distracted by all sorts of things as well. I think that's one of the, you know, the hallmarks of this time is there are so many distractions and so many things that are getting people's eyes off the truth of the word and right. being distracted by other things. Mm-hmm. And see, I know that um, probably I've I've shared this, I think, on your show before, but uh, back in 2007, I had a dream uh, about a crocodile. Yeah, yeah, we've had that. She had, yes, yes yeah. it, and that it was that distraction thing. That was the the message in that dream is to beware distractions, and there are a lot of distractions going on. Um, I didn't know that um, until I got a text from my fourteen and a half year old granddaughter. Every time I say that, I can't believe she's that age already. But um, she was asking me if I had read or if I had heard all of this World War III talk. Now, I knew what happened in Iran. You know, I knew, you know, that that, that was all going on. But, you know, Mike and I, we, we keep up with things that are going on, but we don't camp out on them. Um, yeah, that's a good way he, of putting it. Yeah, yeah, camping out mm. and just you know feasting on it, yeah. and you you hear it, and you hear it, and you hear it, and you hear it, and you know as a man thinketh, so is he. If you are if you are camping out on troublesome things, then it's going to lead you to a place of unrest where your peace is disturbed, and you know I I that's one thing that I am very careful to do is guard my peace. Um, because when you get out of peace, that's when the fear comes in, the anxiety comes in, and then all of that works out into your flesh, into your digestive system, into your your uh, respiratory system, your cardiac system, your Mental, you know, it, it can cause a lot of problems in your body. And I could tell when she asked me that, I, I told her, I said, well, I know what's going on, but where where are you hearing this? You know, I'm I'm thinking, are these 14 and a half year olds talk, talking about World War Three? But there are so many things, as my husband and I talked about this text that she sent, that are geared to cause fear and anxiety. There's so much of that talk. And so I was trying to comfort her. And I said, well, let me tell you um, what the word says about that. And I gave her the scripture out of Matthew 24, verse 6. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And then I just told her to read the whole chapter um of 24 because there's a lot that is happening right now in this world that is listed in Matthew 24 and I said and here's another scripture Luke 21 26 men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and you know I've never, that scripture has never hit me the way it did when I gave it to her, because here are the words that jumped off the page to me, looking after those things which are coming on the earth. I mean, you you only have to get on YouTube a little bit and you start seeing and hearing all of, all of the things that people are talking about that are coming on the earth. There's lots of talk about giants and uh, artificial intelligent things and uh, 
all of the things that are working in the devices. And, you know, if you stop and just think about all of that stuff, it could disturb your peace for sure. And the other thing is, uh, you know, the younger generation particularly has been indoctrinated with this man-made climate change nonsense, you know, that we've got to do this, this alarmism, or that, you know, basically everything's going to be terrible and we're on an extinction, you know, right. trend and all of that due to man-made climate change, which is a load of nonsense. But it's it all is. the kids are being indoctrinated by this and it engenders fear in them, largely. Yes. And and I even told her that, you know, I said um, later, you know, there was even, I guess because it was bothering her, of course, I wanted to be able to comfort her. But I told her, I just said, you know, Grammy and Grampy, we want you to know that that's one of the reasons that we don't watch the news like a lot yeah. of people have the news on all the time. Yeah. Because Everything is geared. I said, and what I'm realizing from you, her, is that it's all over social media. You know, it's, and, and I'm not involved in social media. I'm, I'm not on Facebook. I don't, Twitter, I don't even know what a Twitter is. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm getting left behind <laughs> in all of this technological stuff. But it, my goodness, if I had to look at my Facebook, my tweets, my, I wouldn't have time to do what I need to be doing. And see, these, these two are, are sources of distraction, pulling us, you know, to, to be involved in it to the point that it becomes almost an obsession. Yeah. Um, it, it really has become a problem for a lot of people. But for her, you know, I just told her all of these things, uh, even the political arena, um, are geared, they are almost like designed to keep people in a state of unrest, a state of worry, anxiety, fear, all of that. Yeah. With, with the overpopulation talk, you know, it's like we're, uh, I mean, some of these things I gave, uh, as gifts, um, metal straws because I had a friend that moved to California and she said, you can't even find a straw out here, <laughs> you know, a decent straw. Mm. So I had found these metal straws in a gift catalog. So I gave them to her and I said, okay, here's your straws. And guess what? I'm also saving the creatures in the ocean. <laughs> 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 you know, because they'll have you thinking that, yeah. I mean, everything is going to die because because of plastic straws. Of course, I, now I admit the water bottle situation, my goodness, I, I can't imagine the landfills uh, full of all of this plastic and not even to mention uh, disposable diapers. Yeah. I mean, you th I don't know where they're putting all of this garbage, to tell you the truth. Yeah. But it's um, it's becoming a global concern, you know, and the kids get on these, uh, they jump on these bandwagons and I don't know. I just told her, above all, guard your peace. You know, it's kind of like um, keep your mind stayed on him. If you keep your mind on Jesus and on the kingdom of God, I mean, Back when the um, election was going on, I have an, a nephew that just, oh, my goodness, he's so politically and he's so liberal. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, how did how did he get in our family? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but he, he just couldn't understand why I wasn't upset about all this stuff that he was upset about. Mm. And I finally just told him, I said, look, you're going to have to understand this, first of all. I live in this world, but I am not a citizen, really, yeah. of this world. I'm a citizen yeah. of the United States, but that is not where my heart is. That is not where my mind is. That's not where my energies go. I'm in the kingdom of God, and that's where my mind is, my heart, my energies, my interest. And that's that's why I'm not all upset. That's where I have to stay to maintain my peace. Yeah. 
I can totally relate to that too because even with doing a minute to midnight, you know, I'm bombarded with stuff all the time and having to, you know, deal with a lot of all of these things that are going on. And I've had to learn to switch off um, and and to have periods of time where I focus on that and that, but without letting it get to me uh, too much and be able to switch off. And, you know, sometimes I get, sent so much stuff people want me to look at so much stuff people want me to read so many things people want me to reply to and it's Mm -hmm. like I've had to learn to go nah I'm not going to because otherwise you're consumed by all the stuff all the time and I've realized that with the levels of stress as you said earlier it actually affects your body and I've kind of realized recently through some things I've been through just with blood pressure things and all that and it's like no hang on a second here I you know sort of realize what's going on and so uh it's managing all of that and and keeping it in a balance it's so important and for me like I I I tell people you've got to be in the word that's really most important then there's other things like I I just love walking getting out on the beach here because I live by the beach so I can walk and just forget about all of that other stuff and walk on the beach and enjoy nature and all of that and stop thinking about all that other all that other stuff and uh and things like that and and also just all having to keep up everyone having to keep up with the latest everything's that's another distraction and I suppose it's you know like I've I've always loved antiques and old things and all of that, and it's me kind too. of like, oh, it's just me. And it, but it kind of, it's almost like a partly, I suppose, a semi-escape to a, a world when times were simpler, rather than having to have absolutely everything that people are obsessed with. And you know, Black Friday sales where people fight over the latest whatever it is, and right. it's just nonsense, you know. And, and we do, we need to keep our peace. But I'll just yeah. say, so sometimes people, if I don't reply to everything you send me or whatever you you know I've I've got to manage my time and and my energies too so I try to but I don't always do it because, you know so right. yeah yeah I get those too you know what do you think about this yeah <laughs> and and I tell them you know what I uh, you need to ask God what to think about yeah. that um there's no way that I can look at, like you said, at all the things that people send. And oh my goodness, books. Have you read? The, I said, you know what? I am not a big book reader, to to be yeah. honest. If I'm going to read, I want to read the Word of God. And, and you know, I, I, it's not that, um, you know, I don't mean for that to come across religious-like, yeah. but but I tell them, I'm, I'm not one of these who is interested in the latest, greatest, flash-in-the-pan church fad. Yeah. Or whatever's going yeah. on in Christendom, you yeah. know. And my goodness, I can look back over the years and see the fads, how they have just jumped from one thing to another, to another, to another. And my husband and I got off of that, uh, what would you call it, uh, what what is that little thing that you would put uh, a hand like those automatic walk instead of going for a walk you get a, a treadmill. Oh yeah, it's yeah. a treadmill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and I mean you can get on that treadmill and it's hard to get off of it. Yeah, and what what happens usually in, on those treadmills when you just wear out you fall and then the thing runs over you almost. Mm. And so yeah, I, I think that. Um, I think that in order to protect your peace and to stay in that place, that it is something that you have to do on purpose. It doesn't happen automatically. You have to purpose yourself to stay in that place. And I think that does mean letting go of a lot of stuff because that's what the devil uses is, is trouble and pressure. Yeah. That that's his drive, trouble and pressure. Trouble and pressure. And learning, and, we've, we've just got to learn, I suppose, to hear from God ourselves as to what things to, to look into. And uh, for me, that's the thing. Doing a minute to midnight, there are so many avenues I could go down, and I could be 24 hours a day on all of this and, and reading everyone's things and watching the three hour videos that people send me or whatever. Right. And it's like, you have to know when something is, yes, I need to look at that now, or no, I don't. Or that's not right. that important and, and not to be distracted. And this is, I guess, where we 
need to be cultivating a relationship with God so we actually hear from him as to what's important and what isn't. Uh, right. And, yeah, and, and then utilize our time wisely and don't allow stress from all of these things to overtake mm-hmm. us because it's so easy That's to. Right. It is. And the uh, the other scripture that I gave to my granddaughter uh, was Philippians 4, 6 through 8. In verse 7, it, that's what it says. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, verse 8, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things, uh, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. And that was, um, I guess, Paul yeah. said that. And yeah. that was another thing I said to somebody the other day. Did did do we see Paul? Did we see Paul doing those things? Did we see Jesus doing those things that that were going on? That was somebody was asking me about. Well, what do you think about this? I said, you know, the Bible is my is my go to book about things like that. Um, let me finish that scripture. And seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. And that is so important is to have that God of peace with you in all things. And if you concentrate, and in, in my husband and I both, that's where we like to keep it. Now, when we moved in with his parents to take care of them when they were dying, his mother had Fox News on 24 hours a day. Mm-hmm. I mean, she even wanted it on while she was sleeping. It, it was just, it was all we could do to... You know, when they're older, hard of hearing, so it's loud. There's nowhere you can go in the house Mm -hmm. almost that you weren't hearing it. And I guarantee you, when they died, that is something that is not on our television ever, if it's on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, No, we just don't. We don't listen to all of that stuff. And I think over the years, the things that, that they would talk about on television that would get people all riled up, and then it never happened. You know, um, it, it's just amazing how uh, they want to perpetuate the fear. You know, that's and, one thing I know I've noticed when I have been to America. Um, the the times I've been there is the amount of time that people do, and everywhere you've either got CNN on or Fox News on or constant sport. You, it, yes. with the televisions on everywhere and everyone's glued mm-hmm. to it or something all the yeah. time. It, it's kind of not quite, well, it's really not to that extent here in New Zealand. And you, we, you well, know, people good. will tend to maybe watch a half an hour or an hour's news somewhere mm-hmm. in the day, usually in the evening, and that's it. They don't have news things going on all day. Yeah, there's too much sport watching. Sport's our God here in New Zealand, but I, it's kind of different, I suppose. Um, that's something that really hit me in America is just how many people do exactly what you were just talking about, having right. the, the television on with news things 24 hours a day. It's like, wow, I've never seen that before. <laughs> uh, it It is crazy. It, it, it's almost like, and even like um, my husband and I were following the Astros and we went to an Astros game and I haven't been to a professional game of any kind in so long uh, before the tech. I mean, we, we went back in way back, you know, like when we were dating, but now you go to like a professional, we went to the Astros game and they've got these, the big screen TVs everywhere. And in the, along the mezzanine or a, about halfway up in the stadium, it's like um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like a like like you see on Times Square. You know, there's words moving or some kind of advertisement constantly. Yeah, it, it's just like they have to be stimulated every 
every second, every millisecond even, things flashing and and noise, noise, noise. And, and of I'm course, thinking, that, oh. that gives um, the perfect opportunity to indoctrinate people with everything because everyone's mm-hmm. so wanting that all the time that they can subliminally basically it's, steer yep. people in the direction they want through all that's of that true. stuff. It's like get away from it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I agree. That's it. Yeah, that's how we are. I mean, uh, we live on a lake in a very remote place. I mean, I have to travel to my mother's in order to do this show because um, we have satellite internet. Uh, the phone systems are so antiquated, it won't carry internet over the telephone. So it's just, we're kind of out of the loop, I'll yeah, say that. Good. <laughs> but it's, it's very good. quiet. Yeah. And, you know, just away from all of the hubbub of the world. Yeah. And But yet our children, my grandchildren, are in the midst of that all the time. Um, you know, for a long time, they, they didn't grow up on TV because they didn't have a TV in their house, which, you know, it's kind of like, oh, poor little thing. But no, this is really good because they, they didn't see all of that, you know, when they were little, tiny. Yeah. Now that they're older, I think, you know, they are seeing some of it, but it it's just, um, I don't know. I, sometimes I'm, I'm thinking about. Like if I'm if I'm driving somewhere, if I'm traveling, and I, I see all of the traffic and the people, and they're running, I just think, Lord, surely this is not what you had in mind for us. Yeah. You know, it's just run, 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 work, 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 and when they're not working, they're on their devices, and yeah, oh my goodness, it's it it's um it's tiring. Very tiring. And I think that's one of the things that the enemy really wants to do is to keep us so occupied, so uh, distracted from what really matters in the world. And that's, you know, I used to take my children to this family camp when they were in elementary school and they would always save particular tests um, like close to a holiday, like the two weeks that you're out for Christmas. Okay. Well, they don't want you to leave early. So they'll save these important tests that take place to make sure that they get the people in class. Because as I learned when I got older, it's all about money. They get paid so much for every student that is in school on a daily basis. And you know what? Then I found out churches are the same way. If you're in like one of the mainstream denominations, because I remember when I left the Methodist church, uh, my husband went to a Methodist church and I went to a Methodist church different in different towns. And then um, when we stopped going to the Methodist church, we still got the church letter every single week, every single week uh, from his church and from my church. And I thought, you know, there's no sense in them having to spend postage. I'm going to call them and tell them to take us off their mailing list. So I did. And the lady said, honey, we can't we can't um, take you off of the membership until you transfer your letter to another church. (laughs) And I said, well, you make it sound like I'm a piece of property. Yeah. And what what I realized was, was she told me that they have to pay a certain amount for every member that's on the roll. I was shocked. I mean, there was so much that I didn't really understand about how churches are. And that's another thing. Now I'm getting um, um, questioned, uh, is is the ministry that God entrusted to me, is it a 5013C or a 501, yeah, 5013C? Um, do you have a lot of talk about that? Um, not for a while, we haven't. Um, yeah, I avoid that again. It's yeah, I, I know. It's, Do y'all have that in New we Zealand? We don't have it. We don't have exactly the same system. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, we we do have a tax exempt thing for for certain our churches and organisations. It's a different. It's not called that though. But it's okay, similar. it's yeah. it's it's not like in America. Um, yeah, because the you know. Then you have the government attachment, yeah. per se. Yeah. But 
anyway, it's this is all it's all um like minute picking and just busyness, Bu- busyness in the mind, busyness in the um, day to day, everything. Just being driven. I was thinking of probably a good way to to finish up, Carla, would be if you don't mind for you to actually pray for our listeners because you're always great with <laughs> the prayers. So, okay. Well, I don't have like a deliverance prayer. No, nah, just uh, just per se. I, I'd say yeah. just let God okay. lead you in it. Okay. Well, Father, I just lift up every person that's listening. I ask you to send your Holy Spirit and your ministering angels to minister to your people individually. Uh, Lord, the needs that they have, the the concerns that are, are burdening them, Lord, you are the one. You, you are our help. You know exactly everything that is going on with, with each one of us, and you're concerned about those things that concern us. But Father, you've given us so many um, wonderful words in your word that can bring us, that can anchor us, that can bring us back to that that um, that place, the center of of where we need to have our our um, the things that we think on and we meditate on your word that will bring us to that place of peace and and that stepping away from all the busyness, all the noise, all the things that that Satan would want to distract us, to pull us away from from you, that relationship that is able to keep our hearts and our minds in that peaceful place and a place where we can feel safe, a place where there is rest, a refuge from all the things that are tugging at us from every different direction. I just, I thank you that that we can step back, that we can um, come to you and and join in with you in that place of rest and peace to um, receive your love, to receive um, counsel, to receive direction. Lord, I thank you that when we come to you, that it, when we trust you and we lean not unto our understanding, but we come to you with our uh, our needs and when we need direction, we come to you because you're the one that can bring us through whatever it is we're going through to to the other side of it. I thank you for uh, for your presence, your your ever present presence. I just love that uh, we can live and we can actually live and move and have our being in your presence. It's not an in and out thing. Our presence is not with just you on Sunday mornings or when we go to some meeting to to fellowship with other believers. That's not the only place we can be in your presence. But as you told me years ago, I want you to live and move and have your being in my presence. I want you to be about what I've called you to do. No more and no less. And leave the rest of the mess to me. That word has kept me, Lord, and I thank you for it. And I pray that every person that calls upon your name can get to that place. That no matter what's going on in their lives, they know that in you is safety, in you is peace, in you is rest. That's what I pray for, for all of us, that we can um, draw near to you, that we can immerse ourselves in your word this year for not a New Year's resolution, but but a, a way of life that we can stay connected to you and stay focused on the things that you would have us focused on and not to allow the enemy to pull us away from faith. Lord, that we will not give heed to these seducing spirits that are out in the world. 
are in the church and the the doctrines of devils, Lord, that we can discern because your word, you are the word. And I just thank you for your truth. Lord, I bind all the lying spirits from the listeners, from every one of us. I bind those lying spirits and break their power. And I just loose the spirit of truth into every home of everyone who's listening, Lord, that that their lives can be what you purposed them to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Carla, for being on the show again. Um, it's been really great. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and we've, I'm sure we will have all learned a lot from what you've taught us today. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it, Tony, and I love everybody. Thank you, and look forward to talking with you again. And, folks, Carla Butard's website is carlabutard.com, so be sure to visit it. And also visit a minute to midnight.com, which is our website. All of our shows are found on the website as well as on iTunes and on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the like button if you're watching this on YouTube and to share it as well. A minute to midnight is run 100% by donations. Thank you to the folks that do donate and help us. Uh, there's not a huge number of people that do, but we really couldn't do it without your help. So the faithful people that help uh, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you and um, in, if anyone else wants to you can donate at a minute to midnight.com the music is that is used in the shows I've written played and recorded and we also have a forum on our website if you want to join that too and a Facebook group as well that's about it for this show, folks. We will hopefully be back with another show in a few days' time. God bless, and until then, this is Tony signing out. <laughs>